Hello everyone, my name is Melissa Strathman and this is my State Aid uh, Module 3 for our District Finance course. Uh, my district is McPherson USD 418. In studying the documentation from KSDE for this um, project, um, some of the documentation I found a little confusing as some of the information published already on the KSDE website was finalized fiscal year um, 18 information and some was the budgeted information so in some of my slides you will see the 1617 actuals as well as what the 1718 budgeted information was for the different areas that we were charged to research. The assessed valuation for McPherson is shown here and we did have um, <clears throat> projected growth in that valuation over that um, year time period, it would approximately increase by 4.3% between those two fiscal years. Total cash balances <clears throat> to start on fiscal year 18 and fiscal year 19 are shown on this slide. Um, I know there have been some conversations at board meetings about spending down some of that cash balance and so um, I'm not sure <clears throat> where we will land on that when um, by the end of this fiscal year, but that has been conversations at this point. General state aid for McPherson 418 is shown on this slide, as well as the supplemental general state aid. And I found this documentation interesting when we looked through um, the paperwork. I um, appreciated the budget profile document and how it broke down the different areas of the state aid and then how that was spent and allocated in our district between instruction and all of the different areas that um, our school district chooses to use those funds for. <clears throat> Capital outlay, um, our actual expenses from fiscal year 17 are shown as well as what was budgeted for fiscal year 18. This accounts for about 1% of the general fund expenditures. And in USD 418, <clears throat> excuse me, I've noticed I've noted that um, a number of our maintenance and capital or custodial salaries are charged to capital outlay and this then has impacted the available dollars for the district to have to use typical capital outlay types of projects. Um, <clears throat> if something significant were, need, were needing to be done or an unexpected expense occurred, um, we would have to look at a long-term lease in order to be able to um, complete that improvement project. <clears throat> so we're using that system right now as a management of cash flow and capital outlay, which I have heard conversations at Board of, Meet Board of Education meetings about <clears throat> um, the challenges that that practice um, then puts our district in when it comes to funding, um, especially unexpected um, improvement projects that um, inevitably happen in some building at some point throughout the school year. Transportation costs in USD 418 are shown here. <clears throat> that accounts for about 4% of general fund expenditures in our district. Total expenditures for fiscal year 17 and then what was budgeted for <clears throat> 18 are also shown. Um, and I know, again, this is one of those um, reports that we often look at from the district is typically finalized and available in early October. And so that just hadn't been released yet with the actual expenditures um, per the audit information <clears throat> and just hasn't been released for us to look at yet on the website. Um, in studying mill rates, um, we had an overall um, mill rate increase by 1.931 mills um, for this past school year in fiscal year 18. And bond and interest, um, <clears throat> that dollar amount is um, slowly going down. Um, we did have a school bond um, in 2013. We had passed a $13.25 million bond issue, and that obviously increased the district's overall debt. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, but what was um, timely was that we were coming off um, and retiring a former bond issue. And when we did the 2013 refinancing, that was then in our favor. The mill levy actually was reduced. And so that um, bond, school bond issue, was able to support improvements in four of the six buildings within the district. <clears throat> we're currently undergoing a um, facility review with an outside agency. and. <clears throat> considering a potential um, bond, I think, um, in future years. 
The structure of USD 418 for kindergarten is our students do attend a full day for the majority of the school year. We just have an introductory period of 10 half days um, for students to more slowly get acclimated to a transition to kindergarten and um, size of classes and, uh, and routine, those types of things. Interestingly, <clears throat> our district has had a, a the, has used the blended program format for preschool for probably eight or nine years. Um, and so that is a combination of Head Start, state at-risk, pre-K, special education, and the community paying peers. And so there are four different revenue sources when we look to fund our preschool programs in 418. Student enrollment, um, final enrollment in fiscal year 17 was 2,404 students. McPherson has stayed fairly steady with our enrollment um, in the past several years. And 1,009 of those students um, are from families that qualify for free or reduced lunch status. <clears throat> and that's 42% of the USD 418 student population are on that free or reduced status. Our meal prices in 418 are shown. I went ahead and showed what our reduced price would be as well as our full paying students um, for breakfast and then lunch. Um, the menu prices um, vary a little bit on building level. Elementary is $2.75 and high school is $2.95. And I think that difference is accounted for the number of <clears throat> meal options available for older students in our district in comparison to elementary. Personnel, we employ 204 certified staff and 232.6 non-certified staff. And in this number, um, McPherson USD 418 is the host district for the McPherson County Special Ed Cooperative. And so certified personnel are reflected in, in that number as well. 76% um, of the general fund expenditures is budgeted towards supporting personnel. That is an emphasis of the Board of Education to make sure we're allocating <clears throat> most of our dollars toward funding people um, and having quality um, teachers in the classroom. 4% um, <clears throat> of the general fund expenditures are actually targeted for administration and support staff. Salary ranges, our superintendent salary is shown. Um, our average administrator salary is $72,577. That's a combination of building principals as well as directors of different areas. Our average teacher salary is $42,615. And I went ahead and showed our other certified personnel average. That would encompass some of those specialized employees that, again, are um, 418 employees but work through the McPherson County Special Ed Cooperative. That would include positions like school psychologists, speech language pathologists, and occupational therapist, those type of positions. And then our classified personnel average wage. <coughs> References for uh, my project today. Um, I took my information from these three sources from the KSDE um, Data Central link on school finance. I found those to be very helpful. Um, in reviewing this documentation. It was um, nice to just spread the documentation out and really look at numbers and do some comparisons of different fiscal years and um, to see <clears throat> that steady um, commitment of our Board of Education to be funneling most of the dollars in the general um, fund toward staff salaries um, and to support their recruitment and retention of teachers. Um, the professional standards that were targeted through this presentation are included here below. So I thank you very much for um, allowing me to share about McPherson USD 418.